So I'm Nick Pierce and I'm the director of the IPPR, the Institute for Public Policy Research. Well, I think what Ed Miliband has done is he's obviously tapped into considerable public concern about energy price rises. Uh, those have been blamed on uh, green taxes or green levies on bills, but they can't account for and can't explain the big increases we've seen. I think a lot of unexplained uh, variances in costs in our energy bills on things like um, you know, back office functions, transportation costs and so on. Um, and I think obviously people worry that you know, too much profit is being taken out. If you're making 5% profit margins, it's very high. So Miliband has tapped into uh, justified public concern about the way the energy market is working and appears to work against uh, ordinary bill payers. Uh, obviously a price freeze is not a, an ideal policy. You can't do it for a long period of time. I mean, it's okay if you if you say it's a temporary thing while you fix the market, but you've got to get on and fix the market. Um, price freezes don't work in perpetuity. Well, I think at, at the moment Labour's lead um, or its uh, its own poll position is holding up relatively well. There's more movement kind of in the Conservative and UKIP votes. Uh, I think at the moment Labour will be the largest party in the next Parliament. Uh, whether it'll have a majority or not, I think it's too difficult to tell at the moment. Uh, if I was a betting man, I'd probably still bet on a hung Parliament. Um, and uh, clearly, as the economy recovers, the Conservatives will expect to see their own vote share edge upwards. But as it stands, uh, if I was asked to, you know, to firmly choose one option, it would be a hung Parliament with Labour as the largest party and therefore in a position to try and form a coalition. I think Labour started to put more flesh on the bones of its manifesto. It said quite a lot at the party conference season about things like childcare, mm. uh, as well as you know the uh, energy price uh, cap policy. I'd like to see more on things like childcare and social care. They're very important public services. We clearly need to hear a bit more from Labour about its own approach to deficit reduction, what it would do uh, with the economy, uh, investments in particular in things like housing as well. There's a lot of areas where Labour started to map out the future, but more detail is needed. And I think the, the caring services, the public services, the investments in our infrastructure like housing are areas where we, we need to see and want to see more. Well, I think it's one of those rare occasions when a uh, leader's speech at the party conference has lasted more than 24 hours. It's gone on to dominate uh, the political season uh, since and it plays into some very big issues for the British people, the you know, living standards which are still stagnant, the fact that you know, there is real resentment of um, the energy companies that lost a lot of public trust and so um, it has been a, an agenda setting conference speech. Whether you agree with the policy or not, it's undeniable that it set the weather. Well, I think uh, the high-speed rail project is a very important one for the country. Uh, we do need to invest in our rail infrastructure if we're to deal with the capacity constraints we will face uh, in the coming years. I think uh, the government's been slow to make the argument that this isn't about just a sort of whizzy new train line, it's about dealing with the congestion and capacity problems we will face and it's far better to invest in a high-speed line than it is to try and upgrade our Victorian infrastructure. Uh, so I'm a supporter of the project, albeit one that wants to see uh, proper cost control, but it's very important that we have political consensus on these issues, that we try to secure the long-term national interest, and I hope Labour continues to see it in that light as well. Well, I think what Ed Miliband has done has been to promote a number of his um, new intake, the 2010 intake, into very senior positions pretty quickly, and it gives you an indication of the people that he rates and that he wants to see at the top of the party. So Rachel Reeves, for example, Tristram Hunt in a new job in schools, and you've got people like Emma Reynolds newly appointed on key issues like housing. So Labour has got uh, you know a number of uh, younger people coming through into very serious positions now and uh, there may be another reshuffle before the election but if there is I still expect to see those kinds of faces in the top jobs. So yeah, all parties have people that work in the engine rooms of developing manifestos, uh, working up um, drafts for the politicians to shape and in 2007 I was in number 10 and um, one of our tasks uh, was then to draft a manifesto in the eventuality that the Prime Minister chose to call a snap election. Uh, he didn't, um, uh, as history now records. Uh, we still have the manifesto somewhere on a computer. Uh, it never saw the light of the day and we had to go away and, um, and then wait until 2010 to come forward with a different one to put to the British people. Uh, and so I suppose I have the distinction of being somebody that's drafted a manifesto that never actually saw uh, public um, publication, never saw the light of day, uh, but there we are, sometimes happens.